how to create a orthographic projection drawing for working drawing using Autodesk Fusion 360. I've gone and drawn a very, very simple model here. This is actually our CO2 balsa wood blank. Now, when you design yours, I would expect that it would be a much nicer shape than this or form, I should say rather, uh, something that's a little bit more creative and something that you've actually gone and considered. Remember, this is just the blank that you're given, and this is a clean slate. Regardless, I'm going to show you using this as a sample. So once you've drawn your model, make sure that it's ready to go. Uh, there should actually be some holes in the blank here as uh, for the axles. And uh, I've also gone and got the hole at the back uh, for the CO2 canister. All right, let's begin. So I'm going to come over to here where it says design. Click design, drop down menu, drawing, drawing from design. Now over here, uh, we need to just make sure that there's a few things here. So uh, we are going to create new. Uh, we're going to uh, use just from scratch is fine, but uh, you might have some preloaded templates or something that you've created previously. We are doing standard ISO, we're in millimeters, and we want to use an A3 sheet size. Click OK. Alrighty, so it gives us a predetermined uh, border and predetermined title block. It's information that we would be able to put into that uh, as we go. So imagine this is an A3 paper. Uh, you can see now that it is previewing me where to place my view. So over here it says scale and it says one to five. So this is a 300 millimeter block. So I think one to five is a little bit small. I'm gonna change it to one to two, okay, half scale. So on paper that should print at 150 millimeters in length because it is starting at 300 millimeters in length as a real size. Now remember this corner position here is all the, always the front view. Now I know some of you will be thinking, well hold on, that looks like the side of the car. And you're right, it, it is the side of the car, but um, this is sort of the way that the drawing is going to sit best on the page. So I'm just going to position it here. I, I can recall that. Um, I can rename that the side view and uh, call call this view over here the, the front view. Um, it's sort of semantics, so let's not overthink that. All right, so I've then positioned uh, that first view, the front view. I'm then going to come over here where it says projected view. I need to select the view, and then I'm going to project that view up. I'm also going to project the view across to give me my three standard views that we use for an orthographic projection. Now it's also nice, um, and this is quite acceptable, to feature a, a right isometric view in the corner there. Once you've placed those views, uh, as it says, you can press enter or you can right click OK. So uh, that's the basis of our drawing. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just add a few little uh, features to it. So I'm going to double click on my isometric view and I'm going to make that one rendered. We only render the isometric view, never these orthographic views, okay? Uh, we can then go and zoom in a little bit and uh, put some text. So with my caps on, uh, you can change the font if you, if you wish, uh, but I'm going to uh, call this one the top view. Now, hopefully uh, all of your um, size of the font, etc., is all predetermined, but you can uh, move that uh, to where you want. I, I personally like the labels to be uh, central, uh, but it really doesn't matter. They could be left, ju left justified if you wish. Now, it's always standard convention that our labels are always fully capitalized. Because this is a car, I am going to call this the side view. Hopefully that doesn't confuse you. And I'm going to call this, rather than the end view or the side view, I'm going to call this one the front view. Uh, and I can zoom in. Now there's a few things that you might like to do, uh, such as uh, 
draw yourself some lines on the page uh, so that you can make sure your labels are in line with each other. You can always delete those ones afterwards. Uh, dimensioning is really, really super simple in Fusion. So we just click on the line that we want and we can move it away from the body and it will actually snap in that position. Now I'm not really sure why, because convention here is that we wouldn't feature the millimeters. So I'm not really sure why Fusion automatically places them. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not going to be too fussy, but uh, for me, I would delete the millimeters away from it. Uh, you can also come over here where it says primary precision, and uh, we really don't need any decimals unless it is, you know, indeed a 0.5 or something like that. And there's a few other options. For example, you can add in a dimension symbol there. So uh, remember, you don't want to over constrain your drawing. So I might put that one there. And again, I'm going to delete my millimeters. Okay. So uh, if you are dimensioning um, from a point to point, you can do so like that. And I would do something similar there. You'll notice that when I click and get rid of my millimeters, that the 20 millimeters now appears in that space. Okay, so that's how you dimension. Remember your dimensions are going to go to the side or above the drawing. They never go below because that's where our labels go. Uh, I would also dimension this as the right isometric view. And then we can come into our uh, title block and we can go and fill in some extra information here. You might like to put your school logo um, or if you've developed your own personal logo or something like that, you can create it. Uh, the title is automatically given here as well as the author. Uh, and this is just what I had called my 3D model. False blank. 